Okay, I will see about my power so and about POG media so. Yet I'm a political highway, so highway there. And some baby was so I then so yaja penny seven me a bit of phono and who dear airport and a dear air bar. A year speaker of parliament Abam Bagbin, a day and some be a barber to die and yet as some get to our crown now. Oh, name some more day to the anon or chess eh? Oh, no, no. Assembia or Becano or Parliament via a final Ubianiwa Ubitumi as a sa Nasema or Becano or Parliament. It's no sa judicial in a Kufuad media, the Omoyan idea, yeah, or no, on who the Omoyano, na sa a chief justice, no, on to me, Ember Parliament, Ember, Ember Rulima Nanase, on to me, Ember Parliament, or Ember She, Embra. Emanuti, se chief justice e be ma e tse ono a ombra e ye parliament ona ombe she embra man inti no ono de e watu tu bi amani chief justice ene e ye e kufu adu ya e ye asemke tu akra e nsa imumbe le be pese be mi abiju afon be mi akona ya kwaku ti e nsa ma e koso medamase announcement on the floor you setting words at you uh, how do you feel about some of these things. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we will respectfully take a fifth one. We'll take a fifth one because of the brevity of the question so that we can get as many questions. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sir John Amensa, and I report for GBC Online. Just to reiterate the point earlier made by my colleague. Uh, speaker, as we speak today, the media, we are somehow confused. You address MP as a minority leader and uh, or a majority leader. You are told that, please, that's not my title. Or they'll just cut the line. Please, can you settle this debate for us? Who is the majority leader today in Parliament? <laughs> the Right Honourable Speaker. These are very interesting questions. The first one is easy. It's a fresh instructions to the clerk to parliament to resubmit the bill to the president. I'll leave it at that. The second one, please, it's not part of the duties of a speaker to decide where an MP should sit in parliament. It's not my duty. That determination in Ghana's situation, in various parliaments, these things we are talking about, majority side, minority side, don't exist any longer. That's why in my ruling, I use the term old school. The British model, government opposition, benches, and a carpet in between them. And so, when you are shifting your political lineage, you have to cross that carpet to the other side. And that is why you have the term carpet crossing. Our parliament is not arranged in the form of government and opposition. And Ghana don't like the term opposition. So we decided to adopt the terms from the United States of America, majority and minority. So you can even sit anywhere. <laughs> but the numbers determine who is majority and who is minority. But in our parliament, the practice is for those who constitute majority to sit at the right side of the speaker. And those who constitute minority to sit at the left side of the speaker. That is because after independence in 1957, we adopted the Westminster system, which is practiced in the United Kingdom. But we changed that, even to the extent that the arrangement of the floor of the house is in the horse shoe. So it's not always the case 
that the people to the left side are all members of minority. That's not the case now. And there's good reason behind this. As in the textbooks. The determination, therefore, in our situation, as to who constitutes majority or minority, is a question of numbers. As to where they sit, is the determination first of the political parties who influence who should lead the caucus or party wing in parliament. They, after various consultations, decide that these five people should occupy these positions in leadership. And so they are given the chairs in front. Then in consultation with them, the five leaders, they determine who should sit behind them. Because as a leader, you need somebody that you have trust, confidence in, who has the capacity, so that when you are in, in some difficulty, or you have a challenge, you can just lean over and listen to his or her whisper. So you have a say as to who sits behind you. The speaker is not involved in this room. The whips, particularly the chief whips, lead in trying to identify who should sit behind. And it also has to do with years of experience in the house and also the issue of gender and other professional backgrounds until you get to those who are at the back. Even though we don't sit on benches, we still use the term back benches. The speaker is not involved in this. After they have agreed on it, they then get in touch with the parliamentary service through the clerk who will get his uh, uh, officer at the table together with the marshal. And they will get the names, print them, and place them on the various tables as decided by the various caucuses. The speaker don't come in this. Please, how can you call speaker to come and decide where people should sit? <laughs> it's not part of my duties. Number three. <laughs> I will plead with you. Go and look at that letter. He's the attorney general. He did his service in parliament here. <laughs> I was leader then. Yes. When he was doing his service here. Yes. So I know him very well before he became <laughs> attorney general. <laughs> Read that letter carefully. And that's one of the things they are missing. There's vast difference between parliament as an institution and the office of the speaker. The speaker is the party before the Supreme Court, not parliament. So as speaker, when the attorney general is taking a different position from my position, I should still contract him as my counsel. <laughs> I will leave it at that. Once I'll meet the Attorney General, and I'll tell him my peace of mind. <laughs> On some legal issues and pronouncements he made at the Supreme Court. You know, Attorney Generals must be respected as learned. But it should not be part of what Obama referred to. <laughs> Not me. It will not work. Number four. <laughs> After the terms they use against me, 
is part of the hazards of the work. We're doing everything as leaders, not to bring up our youth, to believe that indecent, intemperate, insulting and offensive language is the way to go. But people interpret freedom of speech to mean that freedom of speech without responsibility. You can just use any word. But you know how offensive it is to you yourself or your parents when it's used against your father or mother. But for me, what I believe in is that you reap what you sow. That one, nobody can run away from it. I think the last question, I answered it. As to who is majority, who is minority, I may declare to all of you, it's not a function or duty of the speaker. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. We will take the next tranche. I see I made, um, the Director of Media Relations is working to do that. Uh, Again, thank you very your much. name? My name is Ahmed Usman Halid, Imam Zakaria, Gurguruwe. No, no, I have to plead the Constitution. Please, uh, I bet mine. <laughs> yes, can you open uh, Article 1 or 2? I just want to quote what the Chief Justice read in Spoon Court in the absence. My name is Ahmed Osman Halid, Imam Zakaria Gurguwe. Oh, a freelance journalist. Not from MPP headquarters, please. My school fees were paid by the speaker, so. Council. Article 2. Yeah. I just want to read what the Chief Justice read in the absence of the speaker. I didn't want to paraphrase. I just want to read article 2 she says this way one a person who alleges i'll leave all and come to surplus four failure to obey or carry out the term of an order or direction made or given under the clause two of the article in this constitution commits a high crime under, under this constitution and shall in the case of the president or the vice president constitute a ground for removal from office under this constitution right honorable speaker this was read before an open court spoon court and the spoon court was saying that it has instructed you to adhere to its orders. Failure is that she's going to apply Article 2, Clause 4 on you. That even the President or the Vice President, if they go contrary, or if they, 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 they may refuse to, I mean, follow the order, they will suffer this particular punishment. Right Honorable Speaker, have you gone contrary? to the Supreme Court orders, ruling, or judgment. Thank you very much. Okay, um, my name is Ivans Uptilabi uh, from TV SYZ and Power FM. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, we want to know whether the four seats which were declared uh, vacant still remain vacant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Simon again. I report for the Accra Times. Uh, in one of the interviews, uh, former Majority Leader Honorable Chairman had with Joy News, 
he said after your predecessor, former Speaker Michael K, give the ruling in 2020, he disagreed with former Speaker Michael K, and you supported his stance. I want to find out why did you go back to support your former predecessor when you express disagreement with his earlier ruling. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. My name is George AC and I'm with Ghana Web. Um, by your ruling on the 17th, the four MPs were supposed to have vacated their seat and the court has ordered them to come back. What, what is your instruction to um, the clerk and those who are responsible? Are they going to be allowed to come in, into the parliament, into parliament or not? Thank you very much, Rather Honorable Speaker. My name is Nana Kweku Bufa, and I work with Opimso Radio in Menshia, Kumase. Speaker, you have been accused of uh, interpreting 1992 Constitution when you declare the four seat vacant. Um, speaker, I want to know, did you do so? Thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, uh, Director. I think we've taken the faith, the faith one. And so, um, Mr. Speaker, may um, answer the um, five questions with uh, Kwekubofa's own on whether he misinterpreted the provisions in the 1992 constitutions when he declared the four seats vacant. Mr. Speaker. Well, you're talking about the same matter using different words. But that is before the Supreme Court. And I've given instructions to my lawyers to handle that. So that is not a matter for me to comment on. My lawyers are handling that. So all questions we were dealing with those issues before the court will allow the court to handle that. What I would draw your attention to is that the practice and procedure of parliament is unknown to many, including the court. Now anything I do on the floor I refer to the standing orders. The courts can declare the standing orders as unconstitutional or unlawful or whatever. Until that is done, as the presiding officer, I'm bound on issues of procedure, proceedings, and practice, apply those rules. And that is what we did. That is why in my statement, I drew your attention to the fact that what I did on the floor was just sharing of information, communicating to the members that this issue that was raised, and by the standing orders, I have options. Could have set up a committee to go and go through it and submit a report. That report could even lead to legislation. Or I could go and inquire into it myself, and then come and inform the House of my findings. That is in the standing orders. That is what I said is being construed to mean ruling. In our parliamentary practice, you don't make ruling when statements are made. Statements are commented upon. By the nature of the subject matter was debatable. And because of its importance, I had to give room for many more members to comment. But in trying to comment, they debated it. So that was what happened. But I'm clear as to my rule. Just inquire into it come and share with the House in the form of information. 
what your findings revealed. And that was all what I did. I did not make any order. Go and read the proceedings. I did not make any order. And for my friend, a veritable honorable Osei Chairman Sabonsu, I'm sure he showed you the evidence where we had that discussion. <laughs> he disagreed, and I supported him. And now I have made a U-10. I thought you should have asked him when my predecessor made the ruling, whether his side disagreed with him and allowed the same member, who is now second deputy speaker, to continue to sit or his seat was vacated. Did they agree with him or disagree with him? You should have asked him. So that one, he will need to produce evidence to show that this is what happened. I don't know where we sat and held the discretion, or it's on the floor, and the official reports are there for you to go and read, whether I got up and in my constitution disagreed with my predecessor. That is for you to, to make your findings on. And what's the last question? I answered all. Yes. That's it. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. We'll take two more tranches and then we'll be done. Um, we're doing well so far. The Director of Media Relations is still going around with the microphones. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, you said the President and the Judiciary have sinned against the... My name is Oyenian Pons. I work with Adam FM and Adam TV. Now, you said the President and the Judiciary have sinned against the Constitution. Could you tell us more on that? What would you say that will be the things or the acts they have done that will constitute, in your opinion, sin against the Constitution? Good afternoon, Right Honourable Speaker. My name is Mia Yukioka. I work for CTFM and Channel One TV. Now, Article One One Two, Clause Three of the Constitution, as well as the Standing Orders Fifty Three, have been invoked by the NPP caucus for the third time this year. Uh, whenever you adjourn the House indefinitely, now we want to find out: Is this an abuse of that provision, and what has been its impact on other legislative processes? Thank you. My name is Emmanuel Akoli of Peace FM. Speaker, a number of people have described this eighth parliament as very chaotic. On events that happen, uh, which happened when this parliament came into being and what is happening currently. Mr. Speaker, how do you see this parliament? Are you proud of the eighth parliament? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. My name is Kwabna Efre Martin. Um, I report for Original TV and Original FM. Mr. Speaker, I would like to know what influenced your decision of adjourning Parliament Sinidai the last time we had our sittings, and what will be your decision if the same situation which happened the last sittings continues tomorrow? <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My name is Clement Akolo. I report for uh, Parliament News 360. I also double as the communication officer for Parliamentary Network Africa. Um, Mr. Speaker, you uh, mentioned that the, uh, both the president and the, uh, the judiciary have sinned. And um, when you look at Article 122 of the Constitution, it talks about um, contempt of Parliament. So if they have sinned, uh, do they fall far of uh, the contempt of Parliament? And what are you going to do about it? Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Ben. I think that's the fifth question for this tranche. I get the feeling that this could be the last one. Am I right, colleagues? Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, with your kind permission, if you may answer the five questions that we referred to. The, the two, two of you raised a question about the sinning of the president and the judiciary. Please go through the Constitution or the laws of Ghana. There is nowhere where the president can refuse to receive a bill passed by parliament. In fact, the crafters of the Constitution are so careful that they even took away veto power from the president. So in Ghana, our president cannot veto a bill passed by parliament. It's clear in the Constitution that the president will receive the bill passed by parliament. If he has concerns, he will communicate to parliament that I have concerns on this bill that you have passed within seven days. Then he has 14 days to put across those concerns back to parliament, and parliament is called upon to reconsider the bill, taking his inputs into consideration. That is what is in the constitution and the laws of Ghana. So if the president refuses to even receive the bill, what has he done to the constitution? You understand? Two, in the constitution, the president is permitted to refer the bill to the council of state for advice. He didn't even do that. So the term I even used is very mild. <laughs> In the case of the judiciary, a bill is a bill. It's not law. It's just a bill. This is a draft that is being discussed. The judiciary is going to do what? Be part of the law making process. Tell us what to do in the bill. It's only when it's passed and assented to by the president, then it becomes law that the judiciary can come in to enter and enforce. There's nothing like that. And this is something that immediately, with supersonic speed, it should have been jettisoned, not entertained at all by the court. Now what it means is that anytime any bill is before us, and we are working on it at this stage, anybody can just take it to the court. And that will mean that parliament will have to stop and wait until the final determination of what? What are they to determine? Please. We are doing this for Ghana, and not for only today's generation. For generations yet unborn. We are building a durable, sustainable governance structure that gives certainty to everybody, that is the rule of law that prevails, not of man, or the rule by law. The two are not the same. When you rule by law, people are not certain of the law. 
And so even investors ran away. And as a leader for so many years, from 2001, I've been a leader. I can mention so many serious investors who say they will not invest in Ghana because of uncertainty of the law. Attempts to invest here, you will definitely have branches with the law, and then the courts and the system cannot tell you what the law is. And they lose a lot. So when you talk about unemployment, underdevelopment, and the rest, now who calls her? Leadership, I believe strongly, is cause. Everything else is effect. Even though followers matter. Followers matter. And that is where, in fact, we applauded the efforts of the president. When in his inaugural speech, he talked about us being citizens and not what? Spectators. Today, are now more spectators than citizens. I think you have to wake up and become the citizens that he called us to be. That is where I'm moving towards. I don't have any ill will or malice, no. I don't have any ambition. If there's honorable bagwin or whatever people don't want, please, that one, I can assure you, I'll go and relax. And my holy village is always there to welcome me. I don't have any problem at all. But once I sit here, I take the decisions and I'm responsible. Nobody else but me. That's why I started with my oath. I swore the oath. <laughs> and at the end of the day, when I'm to account for my life to my creator, nobody is do that, to do that with me. I'll be alone. <laughs> and I'll be there. Those of you who will come later. <laughs> because I believe in life after death. In fact, we have you told that place better than here. So I have no problem with dying. I'm always prepared any time to die. And, but you will come after that. And you will come and meet me there. <laughs> <laughs> eh? I will tell you what seniority means. <laughs> <laughs> the right honorable speaker shall live. To oh, okay. The, the, the I have the indications that there are some two critical questions. So yeah, maybe I'll after finish, that, yes, I'll then we that. can quickly go. Oh, recall. I recall, I can't say it's an abuse. Oh. The constitution permits them to do what they do. It's just that, please, don't only think about today also think about tomorrow when you are doing some of these things. And for me, as I sit here, I thought the focus of those in government shall be about government business, not even the position they occupy, which is more important. It's government business. And for the position you occupy, if you work well, you may even get a higher position. It's the good people of Ghana who decide. So I'm surprised that some people are focused on that one. But tomorrow, you will hear from me. <laughs> we will take, we are bringing proceedings to a close, but I see Our that parliament too. so far is transformatory. In fact, then, uh, the second speaker, I should say. Second speaker, third parliament. To strengthen the institution of parliament. And you recall sometimes he had some rough edges with the president. No wonder he lasted for four years only. <laughs> and it established 
a four-year term for Speaker of Parliament. The fourth was trying to stabilize the fourth, uh, the third speaker, and that was Right Honourable Ebenezer Sechi Hughes. I went with all of them. The fifth came, and that was our beautiful lady, Supreme Court Judge Justice Edeline Bamford Ado. And she, with her experience from the bench, focused on the rules and dignity of the house. So you could see her dressing, her posture, her patience, and everything mattered to the institution. Then, the next speaker, that was Abu Sihawene and Sama Eposo, our political high unit. So, a year Abam Bagbin, and a and Sun Ebetuja, and yet as some kids were watching a year Chief Justice to Kunuse or no Abam Bagbin will be anywhere over to me actually in the street. No, 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 or the baby are no credit that a two. Now that's been your couple of friends are on no quan and a bequaku boon at ten or no quan a bequaku boon at ten. You know, a year. Oma Ekufuado and I say a chief justice no embassy in the media who the baby are not crying down or no or the better. So I win it and some are a course of our political high winners. Everybody have been there for us to say I'm a Japanese who could tease that audio with my aha APOG media. So I don't want to say.